Hey guys, Fallen Jekyll and Angel um, here. Sorry, I'm like, my brain is everywhere right now. I just got home. So, <laughs> anyways, I figured it was time to talk to you about, um, you know, everyone has their little secrets. You know, some aren't so much secrets and some aren't. So I decided to tell you this. Um, everyone, it's not really much to because, you know, there's, everyone might have disorders. But I have some disorders, and um, I would like to share them with you. So, anyways, this is a um, video about my disorders and some secrets I have with them. So, anyways, I hope you enjoy this video. It's going to be more of a serious video, so. So, first off, what I'd like to say is I want to tell you the different kind of disorders I have. So... Um, since I have been diagnosed by a doctor with ADHD, um, borderline personality disorder, um, major depression, major depressive disorder, um, PTSD, let's see what else, oh, anxiety disorder, and I think that's all, yeah, that's all, so let me refresh that. Borderline personality disorder, ADHD, anxiety disorder, and PTSD, and um, major depressive disorder. Those are the ones I have. So I wanted to talk to you guys all about those, each one separately, and let you know how it affects me and stuff. So, okay, so the first um, disorder I would like to talk to you about that I have is a major depressive disorder. Um, there's a difference between having depression, um, a depression disorder, and a major depressive disorder, if, um, none of you know, but there is. Um, so I was diagnosed, oh, before I, before I <laughs> explain, let me kind of explain what a um, major depressive order is. It's a mental health disorder where you are often in a depressed mood, you lose interest in a doing activities, and it can cause a great impairment in daily life. So, I was diagnosed by a doctor um, at age, I believe it was 12. It was 11 or 12 when I found out I had major depressive disorder. And that was actually pretty young. Um, so, a lot of the symptoms and things that went on, and I still do, you know, not as often though. So one of the signs of um, um, major depressive or that I have or had, that I have or had, and um, that comes along with this, is um, I started, whenever I tried to sleep, I couldn't, my thoughts would go everywhere. Um, if I did go to sleep, I couldn't stay asleep. I mean, I, I just... My sleep was just everywhere. I, I couldn't sleep. There'd be very, very little, um, little times that I would be able to sleep. So that was an issue for me. Um, another one was I was eating a lot. Um, my appetite changed. I would eat to distract myself from the depression. And it was, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a distraction, which is a coping skill, but it's not a healthy coping skill. I would eat and eat and eat and eat, even when I wasn't hungry, which that's not good for your body. And um, it turned out that I started gaining weight way too fast. I was getting too big, and it, it just was not doing good for me. I mean, I was 12 at this time, and I, mean, I, I still do it now to this day. You know, I mean, not as bad. I've gotten the help a lot, too. Um, I was in school at the time as well, and it was harder to concentrate. Um, I, I couldn't concentrate in school. I was just, my thoughts, my, you know, and my thoughts were not good. They were always the negative thoughts. They were like, I don't know how to explain, but they were always ones that are like, oh, I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to be able to do this. They were like, just everywhere. Pretty negative thoughts. Um, as that kind of goes into the next one, which is self-esteem. Um, those negative thoughts were always about self-esteem. I had very, very, very low self-esteem. Probably, I was, it was close to none. I mean, I, I actually, at that time, I hated myself. Um, even as a teenager, I hated myself, um, so much. 
um, I, I don't. That's just how I felt, you know, at the time. Um, it, even to this day, there are times I really do hate myself, but then there are times where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, I love myself, and it's just, you know, it, it, I know, I think, you know, well, I know for sure I do love myself. It's when that depression, that depression comes in that I start getting those thoughts. I hate myself. My family hates me and all this other stuff. So it's pretty bad. Um, after I had low self-esteem, I know I started cutting. And it didn't help that I was being bullied at school and, you know, all this other crap. That was just basically put on me. It was the worst. Anyways, it got worse. I, you know, I, I wasn't, well, I'm, I was diagnosed, but I wasn't getting, I guess, the proper treatment yet. Um, I started having suicidal thoughts. I, I, I actually attempted many, many times. Um, I, I just, I was out of control. Um, my behaviors changed. I was getting very aggressive verbally, not, not physically. I've never gotten physically aggressive. Um, but I did say some really mean things to my grandma and, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, it was really, really bad. Um, I was put on different medicines, um, one after the other after the other. They would updose it, you know. It, it was a mess. It was a huge mess. Um, but I didn't take them. I'm like, I'm not taking this. You know, as a kid, well, I'm not sure about you, but for me, I would be like, I ain't taking this, you know. I, I can do it. I don't have anything wrong with me. That's how I felt, you know. I felt like if you take medicine, there's something wrong with you. That's how I was when I was younger. And, um, I started, but then I started taking them around, around when I was 15, I started kind of, you know, started taking them and, you know, doing the right thing. Um, to this point, I, my major depressive disorder, I don't, how should I explain this? I don't have it, I mean, I have it, but I don't say I have it a lot of times because I don't, if I keep, if I tell me myself I do not have major depressive disorder, I will think, okay, I do not have it. But if I get into my mind thinking to where, oh my gosh, I have it, I have it, like over and over and over again, I start thinking, oh my gosh, I have it, and then I become this huge mess. So I try to find different ways to help myself. Um, like I take my medicine, I go see a therapist, and I go see a count, you know, a counselor, a therapist, whatever you want to call her. But you know, there's nothing wrong with you know seeing a counselor. Don't you don't you guys ever think that because there really is not. Um, I'm proud that I do because if I didn't go see my counselors and stuff, I'd probably I wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be here. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, I mean. It's really affected me my whole life, and, you know, I'm getting better now, and I still have those really, really bad negative thoughts, and it affects me daily. It does, even to this day, but I don't let it affect me as much as I did when I was younger. I think I have more control over it, so that's good. Anyways, that's my, one of my major depressive disorder, so... Okay, so another disorder I have is PTSD, also known as post-traumatic stress disorder. Anyways, this is, um, PTSD is a failing to recover from a traumatic or witnessing a traumatic event. Um, so some of the events that have kind of made me have PTSD, I don't, I don't want to say it like that, but it, it's the only way I know how to describe it, is like, I've been abused. Um, the tornado situation that some that you guys know of, um, some of you may, some of you not. If you have it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then um, ooh, go, go go check out my other videos and you'll understand. Um, just there's other ones, but I just don't want to go into everything. Um, you know, I this is more of my diagnosis instead of my life story. So, um, I, I was diagnosed at age 14. And, um, I don't, I don't know, like, I guess I, I started having more of, when I have a traumatic event that happens to me, you know, I start to, 
I don't deal with it well, which is kind of the failing of the PTSD. Um, I don't successfully take care of it. I end up thinking about it more often, getting flashbacks. I have nightmares. I'll wake up screaming at times, or my grandma calls them night terrors. Um, and it'll just keep repeating and repeating and repeating, it, it, and it just stays in my head, and it just bothers me. There are certain things that will trigger certain events that happen, or, um, you know, it, it, it's just hard to deal with. It really is. Um, I, I be, had lots of anxiety with it, and, um, going from this disorder, PTSD, we'll move on to my next disorder, which is anxiety disorder, because they kind of run side by side a little bit. Um, anxiety disorder is a mental health disorder where you fear or worry so much that it interferes in your daily life. Um, I say PTSD and anxiety disorder, for me, kind of go side to side, because PTSD, you know, like I said, is failing to be able to, um, my, I'm just going brain dead. Failing to recover from after experiencing or witnessing a um, traumatic event. And anxiety goes along with that because a lot of those traumatic events kind of affect me. Because then I worry about, oh, I can't do this because what if this happens again? Or, oh, I can't do this because what if this happens again? So it, it, it kind of just goes both ways. Um, with anxiety disorder, I we get to the point where I would worry so much about something, or even in school, and I'd be like, okay, I, I can't do it, I can't do it, and you know, it's just, I get scared so much that I won't do what I want to do. Like, for an example, I know when I was younger, I think it was when I was 15, I wanted to get a job at Sonic, and I started thinking and getting scared, like, oh my gosh, what if I do this, or what if I do that, and I, I didn't do it. I, I wish I did. And I never did. Um, I was in anxiety disorder. I know I was diagnosed at I believe I believe it was 11 or 12 years old as well. Um, anyways, uh, along with anxiety disorder, I have panic and anxiety attack, which I will explain that to you guys um, after all my disorders. I'll explain what happens and you know what's going on. Um, so, those two were PTSD and anxiety disorder, so those were my two other ones. Oops. So, my fourth, sorry, I have an itchy back. So, my fourth, um, disorder, a lot of you probably know pretty well, is ADHD. So, a lot of people think, okay, ADHD, you're really hyper, you're like, always have to move, and you know just blah 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 blah, you're just all hyper. Um, so, me and my sister and brother all have ADHD, but um, me and my brother have the type where it's not that we're hyper hyper, we have to, it's, we have to move, like, we can't sit still. So, you know, like, if you're standing in a line, we have to move. So, me and my brother, well, my brother mainly, he'll move side to side, side to side, because he can't sit still. Or sometimes when I'm at a desk, I sit still all the time. I have fingers a lot, or I'll move, or I'll, you know, I can't keep my body still. I, like, kind of like what I'm doing with my hands. I, I do that. I don't know why. <laughs> but I think a lot of people do that even when they don't have an HD. But, like, right now you guys can't tell, but I'm actually moving my leg, like, bouncing up and down. So that's one thing I do with a with my HD. I actually, surprisingly, was actually diagnosed with it this year. Um, my brother and sister were diagnosed with it a long time ago, but, um, there were suspicions that I did have ADHD, and we finally got it, um, they actually tested it for me, and they're like, okay, you were just tested, and you, you kind of passed through where you have ADHD, so, yeah, I take a medicine called Stratera for it, in front of you, if any of you know what that is. It, and it really does help me with concentrating. And the good thing about Stratera is that it also helps me with my mood. So, like, if I'm sadder, you know, it, it actually really helps me with that. Which I really like that. And it helps with concentration and all that stuff. So, it's a good medicine. I love it, actually. So, it, it's it's good. And I'm glad. Um, really, this, this 
Um, and it, she really, really hasn't affected me, I guess. If it has, I guess I don't notice. But other than standing still or sitting still, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So, my last disorder I wanted to talk about, I made this one last because it's probably going to be the, probably the longest one I talked about. I don't know, maybe. Um, it's called Borderline Personality Disorder. Or, um, some people call it BB, BPD, <laughs> if I can say it right. Um, so, I was diagnosed with this, well, I should probably tell you what it is. My bad. Um, anyways, it's an it's a disorder where you're unstable. You have unstable moods, behaviors, and relationships. So, you're basically unstable. Yeah, it's an easy way to put it. In it. <laughs> anyways, I was diagnosed with this when I was 18. Um, this is the type of disorder where you cannot be diagnosed until you are an adult. So, when I was younger, um, when I was not 18, when I was 17, well. I think it was around when I was 12, they said I had borderline personality traits because they couldn't, this, they couldn't diagnose me until I was 18. There's certain, um, disorders that they have, they, they can't diagnose you to an adult. But by the time I was 18, they finally diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder and, yeah. Anyways, um, I was diagnosed with the age 18, um, so this... Ooh, excuse me. A lot of people don't. Well, science really. It's. Oh, excuse me. I, I have burps in me. That's why I keep stopping. I apologize. Like I'm really gassy right now. My stomach is acting weird. Anyways, um, so borderline personality. It's it's kind of hard to tell the cause. Um, science, you know, or medical, whatever, it ha hasn't been able to know exactly what the cause of borderline personality is but they do know you know parts and bits and pieces of it um some of my symptoms that come with um borderline personality for me are i am all i am very antisocial um i not as much i guess i could say i was when i was younger but not as much um i another one is irritable irrit irritability and i was always irritable, even about the most stupidest things you shouldn't be irritable about, I, I was, and, um, another one is risky behaviors, um, I had a really, really lot of risky behaviors, um, whether it be going on at night, when I was younger, I mean, I was even in all, like, I'm saying, like, 14, 15 years old, going out in the dark streets, you know, just not, not good for a girl, you know, meeting up with people I shouldn't, and, you know, just, very bad things. Um, another one was self destruction, destructive, um, self destructive, um, things that happened. For instance, like self harming or, you know, um, uh, having suicidal thought or trying, attempting suicide. Not really having suicidal thoughts, but attempting suicide and stuff like that. Um, one, a big one that I have, a symptom I have is insecurity. I am very insecure about myself, um, mentally, physically, and emotionally, all of it. I am, and I'm not, I mean, a lot of people will be like, a lot of people will be like, oh, you're just lying, but I, I'm not, you know, before, I wouldn't even say I would be, because I'd be ashamed, but I'm not ashamed for who I am, I am who I am, you know. You know, I say, I tell a lot of people, borderline personality isn't me, it's only a part of me, and, you know, that part I just kind of try to keep away. Anyways, um, with borderline personality, a lot of people, most people, I do, I know I do really bad, it's harder for me to keep a relationship, whether it be a family relationship, or a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, or friendship, it's always been hard. Um, a lot of people say, um, Borderline personality also can the cause some part of the causes can be abandonment, and I believe that's what mine is. I never really was abandoned, but I have the feeling of being abandoned when I, um, from my mom when I was younger. Um, if you guys want to know more about that, I have um, there's a video I posted about um, it's in my negative positive series. Uh, yeah, negative positive series. It's on. I'll put the I'll put the playlist in the 
the playlist thing in the um, link in down below. And I cannot talk today. I apologize. I don't know why. But anyways, I think that's part of why I have borderline personality. You know, just because of that. So yeah, that is borderline personality. Um, some of the risk, risky behaviors a lot. And oh, hold on. Before I say that, um, with borderline personality, you have a lot of self worthless and I had a whole bunch of that and to this day I still do but I don't have it that bad I mean there's times that you know I'll, I'll have self self worthlessness like I don't really care about myself you know I feel I don't feel like I'm worth anything or whatever but um with that um I have a lot of that but also with the risky behaviors um it's embarrassing to really just tell you guys this but I'm going to be honest um, when I was younger, I used to have sex a lot, like, with, even with people I didn't know, and, and that was bad. Um, and I think it was because I, I just did not feel like I was worth anything, so I would, I, I would have, you know, sex with different people to help me feel better, but it, it you know, it, it doesn't make you feel better. It makes you feel dirty and, you know, that's how I felt, you know. But, like me, when I was younger, stupid little me kept doing it and kept doing it. And it, it just made everything worse. Um, to this, to this time, this present time, I don't do that at all, you know. Um, I'm ha I'm in, and if you guys want to know, I'm in a really happy relationship. I'm engaged. And, um, I'm happy with who I am, and I love him to death. We've been to, together for about a year and a half, well, over a year and a half, and, yeah. Anyways, um, so that was my borderline personality thing. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain things very well. I apologize, I am terrible at explaining things, but I'm trying my best, so, yeah. Okay, so when I was talking to you guys about my anxiety disorder and stuff, um, I mentioned something, panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Um, one thing is people think they're the same thing. Panic attacks and anxiety attacks are not the same thing. Um, I have both, actually. I, I have both a lot. So, when I have a panic attack... I usually can tell when it's coming on. Um, there'll be times where I don't know, and all of a sudden it'll just burst out. So, um, for example, one time I didn't know it was coming was me and my grandma were at the mall, and all of a sudden it just came full on. I didn't have no warning, and it just came on, and we had to leave. Um, so, during my panic attacks... I get, like, one of the first things is I get confused. Like, you know, like, when you're in somewhere and you're like, you know, where am I? You know, I, I just get so confused with everything. Like, my mind's just, poof, like, all these questions. I'm just so confused. I don't know anything. Um, I start to breathe hard, you know, start to breathe hard. And it's, it's hard to control. It's like I can't calm down. Even when I do try to breathe, you know, slowly and kind of calm down my breath I, I can't um my heartbeat goes starts going fast like it goes from being a good normal speed to like really really quick within seconds not minutes but seconds um I start to feel really really hot okay this is there's a difference between actually feeling hot you know like like it's hot in a building and then all of a sudden your body just like feeling like it's in flames um, that's actually one of the very first signs I have when I get ready to have a panic attack is I get really hot. Like, I feel like my body is burning, like, in a fire. So, um, I start to shake. And I shake really bad. Like, I don't know, I guess I've been told, because, you know, I can't really see myself doing it. But, um, I've been told by some people that I actually look like I'm having a seizure. If that tells you how bad I'm shaking. Um, I cry uncontrollably. I will cry and I cry and I cry. And, you know, all these things just get really, really worse and worse and worse and worse. Anyways, all of the things that cause it is when I'm around a lot too many people. That's one thing that causes it if I'm around too many people. 
I, I will have a panic attack. I, I can't be around too many people. That's one thing I cannot do. Um, if I'm holding in different types of emotions in and I'm not, you know, saying anything about it or not, you know, I'm not helping myself. I'm just kind of keeping everything in. Just everything. Then that, that can cause it too. Um, so my anxiety attacks, I would say my anxiety attacks are probably worse. Um, to me they are worse. Oh, before I go to anxiety attacks, panic attacks, um, I've had panic attacks before so bad where I couldn't calm down and I had to go to the hospital, the ER, and they would have to give me some medicine to calm me down. Um, that, that's how bad they get. Um, so my anxiety, my anxiety, um, attacks. So, with my anxiety attacks, um, I do feel like sometimes I'm going to pass out. Like, I get that lightheaded feeling like I'm going to pass out. Um, I feel like I'm suffocating. Like, I feel like sometimes there's someone's hands around my neck and I can't breathe on my, you know, doing that. I like I'm, I don't know. Um, I do get this really, really sick feeling in my stomach. I'm going to vomit. And it, it's, it's the worst. Um, my muscles tense up really, really bad. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, like my panic attack, I cry uncontrollably. Um, a difference is when I have a panic attack, you can touch me, you know, try to comfort me. When I have an anxiety attack, for some reason, my brain will be like, don't touch me. And I will literally scream if someone tries to touch me. When I'm having an anxiety attack, I will scream. Um, it, it, it's bad. So... If I have like a long anxiety, if I'm worrying a lot about a lot and stuff, that can, I mean it has to be a bunch of stuff, then that will cause an anxiety attack for me. Um, so I did want to explain my muscle tense up. Um, my muscles get so tense up and I'll start spasming. Um, there was one time that I had an anxiety attack and my muscles tense up so bad, um, I was hurting for about three, four, four days. Finally, Grandma took me to the hospital because my back was not getting better at all. And, um, so, when they did, like, a little x-ray thing, um, I had torn my muscle from tensing up for my anxiety. So, that was pretty bad. So, there were certain things I couldn't do. If that tells you how bad I can tense up, um, I, to be honest, I think anxiety anxiety attacks are the worst because they hurt you more physically. Um, well, they can. They don't always, but they can. Um, and they're both they're both terrible things. And I, I wish I there was some kind of cure to help me. I have been. I'm, that's one thing I'm struggling with. I actually recently, last Tuesday on the twelfth. I had an anxiety attack. Um, my boyfriend Brian actually was on the phone when I had it, and it, it was it was pretty bad. Um, I actually screamed at my grandma because she was trying to touch me, and I screamed. I, I remember screaming, "Don't touch me!" And I, I literally screamed, and I felt bad for it. I kept telling her I was sorry, and I know she told me not to say sorry. That you know, it, it was just it was it was bad. So. I had to take a medicine that I have for anxiety attacks, and it knocks me out. It basically, it's like, it's like a booty dart, basically, I guess you could say, but it's in pill form, and it dissolves. It just, within minutes, you're just asleep. So, yeah, I wanted to explain that to you guys, so. Anyways, I, okay guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, it's a little bit more about me, and, you know, what's going on in might also help you open your mind to, you know, different people, what's going on with them. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's not much I have to say left. Um, like I said, I'll put, um, I'll put my negative series, my negative pause series playlist below because it will, a lot of those things I went through will kind of go with these disorders. So, you know, you got you guys can always check up on those or whatever. Anyways, um, that's all I have for you today. So, talk to you later. 
Bye bye. Oh, before I go, <laughs> sorry. I'm also gonna put the um um I forgot. But anyways, um, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you guys if you ever need anyone to talk to. You can always message me on Twitter, message me on Facebook. I'm here for you. Don't... I know what it's like to be in certain situations. And, um, it's, it's hard. So, if you ever need to talk, some, talk to someone, talk to me, talk to a relative, talk to anyone. You know, even going up to talk to a certain stranger, you know, that you can... I mean, don't, don't actually go talk to, like, really, really bad stranger. I mean, like, when I say stranger, I mean, like, maybe someone in your classroom that you know, that you know is a good person, you know, whatever. Like, authority-wise, I should say. There we go. Authorities. You know, they're strangers that are, authorities are strangers, but yet they're, they will take care of you. Um, that's why I meant, don't actually go to a stranger. Like, that's stranger danger. <laughs> don't you do that. Um, anyways, again, um... Thank you, everyone, for listening and whatnot. I hope you have a good day, and bye-bye. <laughs>